Hello Zany friends and welcome to my first sewing video that has to do with plus size clothes. Today I'm making the Upton skirt. I've already made a mock-up for this and unfortunately the video for that did not come out quite that well but you can see the mock-up right here. And uh, today I'm just going to try to figure out how to make the final version uh, of the skirt. So if you're interested in uh, doing that with me, come along with this little vlog as I do this. So it should be sort of fun. Uh, I am also following the uh, cashmere at uh, skirt sew along. I will leave all the information for where you can get the pattern and their website down below so that you can uh, do this pattern as well. I'm super excited. It is basically just a skirt with a zipper and uh, pockets which are also real fun. Uh, so let's get started. So the first thing I'm doing here is I am cutting out the pattern. So you can see right here is where I added um, three inches for each side of the back panel. So it's going to be a total of six inches. And you can see right here, I started grading it out a little bit because the skirt itself is not straight. It's actually at an angle. So I'm cutting out this uh, pattern already. And then I'm going to cut out the rest of the skirt and the waistbands. And then we are going to start putting this together. Hi, Harry. <laughs> This is uh, a ironing pad that I made. This material on the top that you see is actually from an Ikea curtain that my roommate used and he left for us. So um, it was very thick, so I couldn't really sew through it. It was pretty hard. The inside is a, uh, the Pellon Wrap and Zap, which people use to make like stuff for the microwave, and also some insulation pads that are from a Misfits box that we had. And this is the back. So I used this unicorn material to uh, line the back and I did, you can probably see it right there, but I tried to hand sew it and it didn't work very well. So I actually used um, the heat and bond hem glue adhesive and it looks, it's really sick. So I love this. Ironing on this is amazing. That was the pad I used to use and it was really small. This one is the length of my table. So love that. So uh, now that we're there, I have um, also cut out all of my patterns. So I need to uh, put in the pleat marks for the skirt uh, and mark them on all the pieces of the skirt and then sew them together. I'm marking the pleats on the skirt tops and basically I'm just using this Frixian fine liner pen which is great because when you iron it, the uh, marks will come right off. Um, these are better than the ballpoint. I like the markers better than the ballpoints. But as you can see, I've just kind of done that on both the front sides of both fabrics. Since when I cut it right sides together, I was able to go through and uh, just kind of mirror it. And I measured the amount of the pleat that was on the pattern, which was two and a half inches. So I'm doing that for both the fronts and the back pleats. So I finished putting the pleating on the uh, skirt and you can see what the material is going to look like right here. So I've cut out that and the pockets and the waistbands and the interfacing. I am now ready to take the front part of the skirt, which is this here, and sew it right down the middle, which is going to be that side down there, um, just to sew it together. And then we're going to pleat the top using a quarter inch uh, like stay basting stitch. And then I believe we're also going to pleat the bottom same way, but we do not put the two pieces of material together. I basically finished pleating the tops of both the front and back of the skirt, and now we're going to put in the pockets. Um, so basically you're gonna do it so it lines up with the notches like that. And then you're gonna sew it in. Um, so I believe you're going to sew this part in first and then bring it out and then sew like a seam here and you do that on each side of the skirt and then you're going to put the pockets together and then sew around the outside. So once I'm done with that, I will come back and show you 
how we did that. This is what it looks like once you have uh, sewed it together and finish off the sleeve. I just pinked mine and then uh, sewed it an eighth of an inch away from the seam. So it is basically being sewn to the seam allowance right there. I'm gonna do that with all four other pockets and then what you're gonna do is you're going to lay the pockets on top of each other and then sew all the way around to make a complete pocket. Which is not how I typically like to do pockets but I think in this case it'll be fine. Okay, I have finished attaching the pockets right sides together and making the seam all the way up and around. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going is put it on the dress form and see how it fits. So if you can see, sorry I'm kind of in a dark space, but if you can see the front of the skirt matches pretty closely to this line and where the pockets are does match up here. But if you come around the back, look how much overlap there is. And I think the reason is because I should have put another pleat in right here and I think I forgot. So I'm going to go back and actually just put in a pleat, which should be really easy, on each of these on the sides right in here, which should make this overlap here not be as crazy. But. There's that skirt. So it ended up that I needed to put an extra half a pleat on each side of the back of the skirt. And now we are going to put the interfacing on one side of the waistband. So these are the back skirt waistbands. We're gonna put uh, one on the right side, one on the left side. And so here's the, the other side of the back skirt waistband. And we're gonna do the same thing with the front waistband. So basically we should have one side all the way around with interfacing and then one side all the way around without. Then we are going to apply it to the top of our skirt and we're getting really close to being done which is amazing. Our last step is that we have attached the back waistband to the big front waistband and then another back waistband and we've done that on both sides. So this is the front outer waistband and we're going to attach that to the top of the skirt now and then put in a zipper and we'd be done. Okay so I put the zipper in and all we have left to do is to put on the other side of the waistband around the top, turn it over, and then to hem it. And then I will show you the final reveal. I already tried it on and it fits perfectly. So much better than the mock-up. I'm so excited. So just a few things to wrap up this video. As you're going to notice in the pictures, uh, there's a little bit of a fitting issue. And what basically happened there was that uh, when I first made the skirt, it fit perfectly in the waist and the upper waist. I could kind of pull it up uh, to the middle waist part and it fit perfectly. Uh, that was uh, about two to three weeks ago when I finished the skirt. And now that I'm done, I uh, see that it needs to be taken in another two inches because my measurements have completely changed since the time I fit the skirt. This also leads me to another conclusion that as far as for me, I don't know if skirts, as much as I love them, are really my thing. As you can see, I have a very short torso and it, the proportions just don't look right for me personally. So I think going forward, dresses and tops and like jumpsuits, um, I have plans for dungarees coming up. Maybe those are the things that I will do as well as the historical costume. So that's kind of where I am right now, especially while I'm transitioning losing weight because those items will kind of grow with me as I lose weight. Uh, so that is basically it for this project. I really liked the ease of learning with this pattern and I'm actually considering making the full Upton dress because I like it so much, but maybe not with the pleats, maybe just uh, more of the gathered uh, skirt instead. So that that is my plan going forward. But I hope you enjoyed this uh, Upton skirt tutorial slash journey. Cat. And until next time, stay zany.